So, as I was already introduced by Victor, I'm Tobias, and I, sell, uh, I say hello from Zurich in Switzerland. It's already evening here, so uh, this talk is between now and the beer later on, on my side. I'm the CTO and product manager at Vision. Um, I'm based in Zurich, and I'm in IT since a very, very long time, so I have done my fair share of experience there. I'm a big fan of open source, and I would say I'm using open source since the mid-19s or so. Yeah. A few words about Vision so that you know where I'm working. So we have been founded in, founded in 2014, and today we are a bit more than 50 visioneers here in Zurich, and we have a few ones in Vancouver in Canada as well. Our expertise is to run managed services in, in the cloud and on-premise. We also are special, specialized in managing OpenShift and we are providing namespace as a service for our customers. So that we don't keep our knowledge to ourselves, we also offer cloud native consulting with our expertise in, cloud, in the field of cloud native software. We do offer 24 seven operations and with that we are also offering SLAs to our customers. We are very security sensitive, so we have several certifications and papers around. But the most important thing for me, we are a very open company. If you are interested to learn more about how we work, who we are, what we do, our company handbook is available in the internet for everyone. But now let's dive into Crossplane. Actually, that's what we are talking about today. We are using Crossplane since about January 2021 in production already. So the initial project, project uh, started in the middle of 2020. And it's a very crucial part of our product division AppCat, which I will introduce to you a little bit later. We do a heavy investment in using Crossplane, but we are also contributing back to the community. Today, we already have three providers written by ourselves and provided to the community. Plus, we also have an integration to the Open Service Broker API, so we can expose cross-plane compositions and XRD to the Open Service Broker API world. Let's have a look at compositions, because understanding what compositions are and how they work is important to know what composition functions can do today. Compositions are a basic feature of Crossplane since its very early inception back then. And they are basically a template to apply resources to your Kubernetes cluster. But they are not just a template. You can also transform and patch things in these resources. So you can have an input, do something with this input, for example, do a string concatenation, like the, the transformation of an input value, and then patch a field in the list of resources you have defined in your composition. When you dive a bit deeper into compositions and want to do a little bit more advanced stuff, you might have some issues. So today, it's not possible to have conditionals in compositions. That means you cannot conditionally add a resource to the list of resources or remove one depending on an output, on an input from outside. You also cannot have loops. So that means you cannot create resources based on a number of an input. You always have a fixed list of resources in your composition. And last but not least, advanced transforms are not possible. If you want to look up something in an external system, or if you want to do other exotic stuff, the transforms are really very basic string and other transformations. So, that's now the time to say hi to composition functions. They were introduced in Crossplane version 1.11 back then and are marked as an alpha feature today. They are complementing patch and transform compositions or they could even replace it. But if you want to, re, uh, to create a composition function, you can do it in any language. The programming language just have, has to be able to read from standard in, do something with it, and write the output to standard out. That's all which is needed for writing a composition function. They actually run in a standard OCI container, so you have to package your composition functions into a OCI container and made it, make it aware to the composition function runner, and then it's able to be executed. 
The result of such a composition function is a new composite resource, which gets fed back into the cross-plane ecosystem to then be applied to the Kubernetes cluster. Hello world, that's how it looks like. It's fairly easy, so you have a standard composition and it introduces a new field, the function field. In this function field, you define an array of functions to run and you give it a name. You specify the type of the composition functions, which today is only container. And you specify in which container, where to find your container, where the composition function is stored in. That's all what's needed to specify a composition function, actually. Very easy. And such a composition function, a function itself, could look like that. I mean, it's a very simple example function. It's a, a Python script which reads from standard in, parses the YAML into Python data structures, adds an annotation to the data, and writes it back to the standard out in YAML format. Just a little warning, don't run that in production. It lacks error checking and many other important things to do with composition functions, but it might give you an idea how easy it is and how it look, could look like. When working with composition functions, there are a few things which are good to know. So functions are stacked. So you, you've seen an array and they run after each other and pass the result to the next composition function. You can combine composition functions with, with patch and transform resources fairly easy. If you do that, PNT runs first, it does the patch and transform, and then the result of that is fed into the first function of the array, and then it gets run through this list of functions. Objects which are passed around between the composition functions are of the kind function IO. They actually look like a Kubernetes object, but they aren't because they are just uh, an interface to talk between functions. So they, you won't find this kind in your Kubernetes cluster, actually. It's just plain YAML. You always have to pass around the full desired state. Resources which are not in this desired state are simply deleted from the cluster. If, if you want to do that, that's good. But if you don't want to do that, you might have a problem losing data. So let's have a look at our cat, uh, I mean the app cat. It's not a cat actually, it's the application catalog. That's our product, which is a cloud native marketplace, which we are offering a self-service ordering of services from the cloud or from uh, managed by us. So that means a developer or a user of the Vision app cat product can specify their needs like a database, a cache or whatever. And then our um, compositions and our cross-plane a configuration makes sure to order that service either by the cloud provider if it's available or from our own service catalog. We also have a few managed services around which we can provide that way. The important part here is that all services in this catalog are fully managed. So we are taking care of that backup monitoring metrics, everything what's needed to run these things in production. For making that actually happen, we do have to do some advanced stuff, which isn't possible with the default PNT um, compositions. And that's why we very early on started to look into composition functions and made use of it. So here are a few use cases which we are doing with composition functions. For example, we do have orchestration of complex tasks. An example here is that if a user wants to raise the disk size of a cer certain service, it's not always that easy, it's just making the PVC a little bit bigger, but you have to copy around data or whatever. But, and this isn't really possible right out of the box. So um, we use conditionals here. If a customer raises the disk volume size, for example, we do deploy a Kubernetes job, which does the heavy lifting and the composition function figures out that it needs to add this job to the list of resources. And that wouldn't be possible with PNT. Also, we are from time to time deploy patch releases of our services. And some services are implemented with provider Helm, actually. We are shuffling around Helm values. And if we do that uh, from the maintenance controller, the composition function has to figure out, has it been done by us or has it been done by the end user? Because the end user can also uh, upgrade a version of a service. 
and that's done in the composition function, which has logic to have uh, to have a way to see where the uh, value actually comes from. And last but not least, conditionals all the way down. So a customer can enable or disable features of a service. And depending on that, we deploy resources on the cluster, we remove the resources from the cluster, and that's all done in composition functions. We had a fair share of learnings, actually. So we are a heavy user of OpenShift today and getting the default XFN runner of Crossplane to work quite well with OpenShift wasn't that easy. It uses CRUN under the hood, and yeah, we didn't really get that working on OpenShift. We also figured out that it's relatively slow to run a huge amount of functions in that way. Plus, we also learned the hard way that functions are not executed if you delete something. So we, for example, want to have a feature for protecting a user from accidentally deleting production data, so a deletion protection, actually. And we couldn't do that with composition functions, so we nowadays have webhooks and we have controllers making sure that these features are available. Our developers took some notes during the learning phase, so if you're interested, you can scan this QR code and you are directly linked to our internal knowledge base, which is open like our open company handbook. So everyone can learn from our findings. The result of that is we built our own functions runner because that one was much more compatible with OpenShift and it was actually much more faster than the OCI runners. Functions are executed directly in the gRPC server. Everything runs directly from memory. But as mentioned before, there is only the type container for functions. So we had to do some workarounds. It works quite well for our use case. So the, the container image actually is the name of the function in the gRPC server to call here. And the endpoint of the runner is the gRPC server, which runs as a sidecar in the crossplane pod for the reason of not being able to have TLS connections to the gRPC server yet. So we had to make sure that it runs in the same pod for security reasons. You can find all the code on GitHub. It's all open source in this repository. You find the gRPC server, you find the functions, the webhooks, the controller, everything what's needed for our Vision AppCat product actually. A real production example, so uh, our one of our compositions is more than 800 lines of YAML. If you scan the QR code, you are directly linked to this YAML file on GitHub. And to make this manageable, we do have our own configuration management system called Project Syn, which of course is open source as well. You can find all the information on the single tools. We are making heavy use of JSON it there. It's a system to compose different configurations together and also helps in writing compositions and other stuff for Kubernetes itself. So if you're interested, feel free to have a look there. So what is the future of composition functions? Uh, it's planned for the 1.14 release uh, that um, it moves from alpha to beta. Behind this QR code, you find the design proposal, too long didn't read. Uh, there will be an introduction of function pipelines in compositions. There will be an introduction of a gRPC server, which executes functions directly in memory. So I remember something here, which we did before. And it will also introduce a function CRD to deploy functions and crossplane can then make sure that the connection is secured and the RBOC is sane and all this stuff. So uh, last today or yesterday, I found a um, call to action to try out the beta composition functions. Behind this QR code, you are directly linked to the um, uh, GitHub discussions where you could provide your inputs to beta composition functions. The future at AppCat, of course, we will be adopting our vision AppCat to the beta functions. So there will be some work to do on our side, but that's okay. I mean, that's part of the business when you start using alpha software. And we do currently trial to only use functions and do not use any PNT anymore to have one place to have all the code and have it testable and have everything at the same place.
that's all. It was quite a lot in these uh, 15 minutes. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me via email, or you can also find me on Mastodon if you're interested. Thank you very much. <laughs>